Mariana, welcome back to News by Muse. Traffic Season 4 starts next Wednesday, January 17th on National Geographic and Hulu. This season really raises the bar, I feel, in the series, and it really delves into a lot of serious issues. What was it like developing Season 4 and the topics that you're talking about this season? Yeah, we looked at season one through three and we thought, ah, oh, this isn't dangerous or difficult enough. How can we make this even more dangerous and difficult? You are right, Rob. It, 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 Michael. It was actually my favorite season so far for many reasons. I think we have 10 incredible episodes, uh, trademark traffic with you know unprecedented access, adventure, but also more importantly, these really... Um, topics that you know affect us on a daily basis and yet we know so very little about them so that's what i like about traffic and in this case we approach some topics that are super important and uh, that we don't know much about um and it got very personal very fast from right the beginning of the season because i actually got the opportunity to travel to portugal my hometown and film an episode on hash which is one of the biggest uh, drugs in europe that is also sometimes used here in the united states it comes from the marijuana plant but it's the drug that a lot of us try first drug we try in europe and we got to look at the trafficking of that drug and then you know it ended with the last episode where we were doing a story about gold um, in africa gold trafficking in africa and we got stuck in a military coup in niger and weren't able to get out because all the borders and airspace were closed and we were in a very dangerous part of the world and so it was you know, very personal, uh, but we were also able to get incredible, 10 incredible out, at the 10 episodes out there. Yeah. And this is some of the best investigative journalism that I've seen to this date. Because uh, not many people, not many news outlets are willing to go this far as they used to be and used to be able to do. Um, how, imp how important that is it not only to keep raising that bar and keep putting the stakes higher and higher when you're doing this to tell these stories but also when determining the topics how hard how difficult is it and is it a commutative uh effort with your team or is it something that you see and you want to oh, do it is I have an incredible team, um, both at, on traffic and also on National Geographic. Um, and it's uh, a very long process of trying to figure out what stories are right. I would say that a lot of it starts from our own curiosity as journalists. Um, but at the end of the day, we want to approach subjects that we think uh, people would care about, that, pe that affect people. Um, and so, you know, you think as black markets as a finite resource, right? There's a show devoted to black markets. I mean, how many subject matters, how many episodes are there? Is it possible to make? But you'd be shocked at the list, the long list of black markets and episodes that I still want to film. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think what's incredible about this season in particular is, is that we approach subject matters that either people didn't know existed, such as the trafficking of body parts. We think as Americans um, that once we die, and I think a lot of people around the world would agree that once we die, we know we have a say on what happens to our bodies. But in fact, that is just not the case. Uh, our bodies are being hacked up and sold to the high highest bidder um, in, in this crazy, unregulated underworld of uh, body parts trafficking. And again, something that we know very little about. Right, right. And um, earlier in the week, I told you we're going to pick two episodes to really talk about. Uh, as I was doing my research and we came up to one episode, it really hit close to home, literally very close to home. And it's the episode about illegal gambling. And that's the episode which we want to focus on. Mm -hmm. I grew up and live in the San Gabriel Valley. And we've been seeing this a lot over the last years. And especially after COVID, it feels like it's growing even faster here in the San Gabriel Valley. What was it about focusing on illegal gambling and really telling that story, especially getting so close since we both live here in L.A. Yeah, you know, that story came to us actually through law enforcement. Uh, we were filming a scene for another story with uh, law enforcement here in L.A. with the L.A. Sheriff's Department. And they told us, they asked us, have you done something on illegal gambling? Because it is exploding in this part of the world. And they think 
and we started investigating and realized that actually it's exploding everywhere, particularly all around the United States. But it really set us, uh, you know, on a crazy ride where we spent time in these casitas where they have these illegal games, but all the way to mansions in Beverly Hills where we saw high stakes poker games being played by billionaires. Um, all this very secretive world that is worth billions of dollars because the gambling world, the legal gambling world is is booming. We know it's billions of dollars a year, but it is nothing in comparison with actually the illegal gambling world. And we got, we actually had some of the sketchier situations while filming happened, while filming that episode. You'd think illegal gambling, I mean, how dangerous can it be? Well, we were filming in a high rise, uh, also a poker game in a high rise uh, here in, in downtown Los Angeles when a fight started between two guys and one of them was armed and he takes out his gun and points it at the other guy and the other guy had a knife and uh, you know things got very hairy very fast um, and again you, the dangers on traffic usually come from the places that you least expect yeah and this episode you don't really see in the last three seasons where somebody recognized you right off the bat like kind of knew who you yeah. were and in this episode this actually occurs which I was like you kind of feel a little like oh. scared for you because you don't know what's going to happen. It was nerve wracking. I was there under the cover. I was in this Beverly Hills mansion under the cover of being a friend of somebody that took me there. I was not there as a journalist or I was, but I wasn't telling people that I was there as a journalist. And, uh, and suddenly as you know, after a, some time there and seeing how people are playing and the girls that are around it, you know, there's, there's prostitution that's involved, there's drugs, there's, uh, um, you know, gambling that happens. And suddenly somebody comes up to me and one of the girls and says, um, I think I recognize you from somewhere. And I realized that that was the moment that we should actually leave. But it was fascinating. Again, these things are happening in our own backyards all around us. And we have no idea. I've passed by these streets so many times and looked at these houses. And who knew that there's illegal gambling or illegal smuggling and drugs and labs. And this is what sort of completely changed my perspective about the world. Uh, you know, we I don't look at neighborhoods as uh, safe neighborhoods or, you know, rich neighborhoods and therefore safe or only legal things happen. I see sort of dangers and black markets everywhere. Yeah. And growing up for myself, growing up in the hood, you kind of know. And you you know what's going around. Yeah. Even though nobody else does. But yeah. this is the first time I didn't know it was going around going off like this here in my neighborhood because I see helicopters almost every other night on the street where you were at mm -hmm. and I was trying to figure we were me my sister because I had my sister watch the episode as well what was going on on that street mm -hmm. and and I believe on that day that you were in the area I'm not going to say where because safety reasons but when you're in the area, there were seven, six or seven raids that were going on on that day. And yeah, we spent yeah we spent several hours with the police that day, just basically going. They were doing stake stakeouts, so we spent actually we were with them twice. Once was up several weeks before doing the stakeout, so they're just monitoring, and they have several different cars monitoring uh, the the ins and outs of uh, these places that they believe were running where there were these illegal gambling de dens. And, uh, and then we came back several weeks later once they had all their information to actually raid these places. And again, I think you, I don't know what you're, when you think about illegal gambling dens, you think about, but we, it was everything from sort of a, a very humble looking house um, in sort of a more modest neighborhood to one of the houses that we went to was a beautiful house worth millions of dollars and it's believed that that's where the person that was running that whole operation lived but also was running some of the the gambling out of her own house so it was truly fascinating and it was several different raids and houses at the same time all around this neighborhood and people are living next door and they have no idea yeah yeah and and that occurred to us too yeah. it got really really close and we didn't even know not even, and this is not a part of the episode yeah. where we didn't even know that illegal gambling was going on literally feet away from where we were at. So yeah, that's- and, and I, I would just, 
And I would just add, Michael, that the problem is that you think, oh, it's illegal gambling, it's completely harmless, but with illegal gambling also comes drugs, violence, prostitution many times. So it's it's actually something that people should absolutely be aware of. Yeah, and this is something that I love that you talked about in this episode, the correlation between legal and illegal gambling and how that t touches the point. What was some of those things where between because i think when people think about legal gambling they think oh there's no harm done nothing it doesn't lead to anything else but it actually does especially since this is uh, gambling is such an addiction in this country can you please uh, elaborate on that it is it's a huge addiction and it's a forgotten addiction um i think that people don't realize there are not enough resources put out there but now you turn on your tv or your your telephones and there's gambling everywhere and it's being sanctioned and it's you have these companies buying all these gambling platforms. And I think there's a sense that it's, again, it's harmless, makes a lot of money. Whenever there's money to be made, people like it and embrace it. But we spoke to, you know, one of the things that we wanted to do always, we do usually with traffic is we want to see how this harms people and the negative side of all of this. Um, so we ended up actually talking to a lot of uh, gambling addicts and, uh, and it's it's very sad. I mean, nowadays they they can't turn anywhere where there isn't gambling. And we actually spoke to a lot of people in that were do working and and profiting, but also playing and gambling in these uh, gambling underworlds. And it's fascinating to see that they say, you know, in many ways, even if I wanted, because back in the day, if you feel like you're spending too much money, either a casino can stop you from going, although they usually don't because they want your money, or you can stop yourself from going. You can black, black, um, uh, what is it called? Black uh, list yourself in these casinos and not go. But nowadays, you know, you can just, you know, step into a high rise or go into a little casita next door and there's gambling out there. So even the people that we met in these gambling underworlds will tell us that this has been really bad for their own addictions. Yeah. And uh, to to close off for this, uh, to talk about this episode, um, we see a correlation. There's a lot of legal legislation, especially in California. They had uh, put on the ballot last year about online gambling and it failed but does it really stop anything in your eyes after seeing all this with all either the legalizing of gambling or even uh not allowing certain types of gambling within a state do you really feel like it's just it's just things that they want to show the public but in reality the illegal gambling is thriving and growing and it's not going to stop anything and sometimes you know, when you look at it yeah i think it's a complicated um issue because you know whenever there's money to be made uh, there tends to be an em embracing of it and uh, less resources i think that as long as resources are put to the addiction side of it and making sure that there's you know people paying attention to that part side of it but also to the violence and to the drugs and to the you know, weapons and prostitution and everything that comes in with the gambling. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I think one of the re questions I had I had for many people is like, why are you coming and playing uh, and gambling here in this illegal den when you can literally go, you know, drive 10 minutes and gamble or even pick up your phone and gamble legally online? And what we got a lot of people telling us is because, uh, you know, First of all, you don't pay tax, right? You, you're, you're, you, whatever you see, cash in hand. Um, you're, they like the idea that they don't have to go to a formal place; they can do it informally, um, and nobody needs to find out about it. Your wife maybe doesn't need your husband doesn't need to find out that you're you're gambling. Um, <clears throat> but one of the things we've noticed is that even when we did our marijuana episode, is that uh, when those when people when laws are being passed and regulations are being put in place. Um, and you don't that a lot of times uh, that actually means that, that there's a growth in the black market because the people, um, you know, there's there aren't resources or people that are involved in those worlds that aren't included, which was what happened with, mari with the marijuana uh, industry here in California. So it's complicated. And I'm actually want to see what happens in the future in terms of these illegal uh, gambling, illegal gambling world. Now that gambling in general and the legal side of it is being embraced. Right. And I agree, especially with companies and corporations and 
uh, leagues such as the NBA, any well, the NHL hasn't touched onto it, but the NBA and the NFL are looking into it. So it'd be very interesting to see what happens in the future. Mariana, thank you so much for always stopping by and being a part of News by Muse. Uh, you've become a great friend to to us here, and we always enjoy talking with you. We could have easily gone an hour just on these topics, uh, but uh, we wanted to choose one just to make sure we focus on something that's going to hit close to home. And uh, we're looking forward to season five. I know you're working on that now, so uh, we can hardly wait. But also, uh, thank you so much again for stopping. Oh, thank you, Michael. I always love talking to you. Thanks so much. And Trafficked uh, season four begins January 17th on National Geographic on H and Hulu. You don't want to miss this season. It's going to be something worth watching.